In this short video, we're going to continue our exploration of lines. And one of the most important properties of a line is something called its slope. Now the slope is a number. And what it does is it measures how steep a line is. So first of all, it tells you, based on whether it's positive or negative, if the line is sloping uphill or slanting uphill as you go from left to right, or if it's slanting downhill as you go from left to right. So a negative slope, so a negative number uh, for the slope would mean it's going downhill from left to right. Positive means going uphill. And, but it also tells you how steep it is. If you were trying to walk up that line, how much effort would it take? Well, if it's very steep, you're going to have a large slope. If it's not very steep, if it's almost flat, then you're going to have a small slope. And finally, if it's completely flat, horizontal, then the slope will be zero. Now, there's still one more case that we haven't talked about, and that's a vertical line. A vertical line is so steep that no number can describe its steepness. So we say that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. So let's look at a little example here. Here I have six lines and or actually they're line segments because there's no arrowheads on the lines but that's fine we can still look at their slope and we're going to try to match them up so Here it is somehow. Now we can see what we're trying to match up here. Let me just make it visible. All right, so undefined slope. The undefined slope would have to be a vertical line. The only vertical line is One that has a large positive slope. Well, there's two lines here that have a positive slope. Line D, the green line, and the blue line, line B. Both of those slant uphill as we go from left to right. But D is much steeper than B, so having a large positive slope would be line D. Having a small negative slope, well, again, which ones are slanting downhill? Line C and line E, but E is much steeper than C, so C is going to have a small negative slope. Zero slope would have to be a horizontal line. That would be line A. Small positive slope would be line B, and a large negative slope has to be very steep and going downhill, that would be line E. All right, so uh, let's see if we can actually assign a number to this slope. We say it, it is a number. How do we calculate that number? Well, first of all, we use the letter M, or the variable M, for slope. And Steepness would be defined as the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. And in what we were saying before, that it has to be positive as you go up from left to right, that means we're going to say that if the vertical change going from left to right is up, then you have a positive slope. If it's down, you have a negative slope. Alternatively, you know, if we're going from left to right with the horizontal change, it's positive. If I were to go the opposite direction, I could still calculate the slope, but I would have to calculate moving left or count moving left as negative. And so our 
slope, the other way to think about this is it's the change in the y coordinates over the change in the x coordinates between two points on the line. And we many times refer to the change in the y coordinates as the rise or the vertical change, and the horizontal change we call the run. All right, so in order to calculate um, the slope, just by looking at horizontal and vertical change, the first thing I have to do is pick two good points. And two good points mean points that lie on the grid boundary. So for example, this point right here, let me just make that a little bit that point right there is on a grid boundary. And here's another one over here. So I have two good points. The next thing I'm going to do is starting from one point. Oh, let's go ahead and emphasize those two points again. So I'm going to work from left to right. So I'm starting at this point on the left. And I'm going to count the number of squares to get to the vertical grid line for the other point. So I'm thinking, and I may not always actually draw a triangle here, but I'm thinking about having a right triangle. And so I'm going to start here, and I'm going to count. So this would be where I start would be zero. Then I go one, two, three. So I'm going, I'm going three up. And then we'll see on the next page. But I'm going to go from this point after I've gone three up. How many far left or right? Well, here I'm going to go to right. So again, let me put my lines back in again. What did I do? I went up three and to the right. So that would be a positive 3 and a positive 2. So that tells me that the slope, and the <coughs> vertical change goes on top. So up 3 and to the right 2. So the slope of this line is 3 over 2. All right, let's look at some more examples. Here I actually have six lines, so let's see if we can uh, determine their slopes using this method. So let me see if I've got. Oh, please. Okay. So let's start in A. I'm going to start with the yellow line. And I am going to pick a couple of good points here. I'll take this one. And I guess I'll take that one. And I'll start at the leftmost point. And I'm going down to, oops, kind of wanted to make a line. So I'm going down to, I don't know why I have the green line. So let me just go down to, and then right to. So for the yellow line, the slope would be down to and to the right to. And that's negative 2 over 2. And I can simplify that to be just negative 1. 
Now for the green, again, choose a couple of good points, maybe this one all the way down here, and this one here. It's a very steep, it's a positive slope, so I should always you know, do a little sanity check to make sure, certainly for the first uh, line here, A, that has a negative slope, and B should have a larger positive slope. And so again, uh, from this point, I'm first going to go up, what, four? And then I will go to the right one. Oops. For B, the slope is up 4, so positive 4, to the right 1, 4 over 1, which would just be 4. <coughs> now, for line C, it's a horizontal line. So I should be able to say, without doing any calculations, that if it's a horizontal line, the slope is 0. If I forget that, then I could still go back and choose a couple of points. And then between these two points, I go zero up. And then the number to the right, what is it? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight right. So the calculation will still give me 0 over 8 equals 0. But really, we shouldn't have to do any calculation. We should just see, ah, this is a horizontal line. The slope is 0. Let's look at the green line here in D. And I better pick a couple of good points. Maybe this point right here. This one will look, look fine. And I'm going to go just down one. And then I'll go over to the right three squares. And this should have, I mean, it's slanting downward as we go from left to right. So I expect to have a negative slope. And sure enough, that's what it's going to be. I've gone one down. 3 to the right, so negative one-third. All right, in the uh, last grid here, line E is a vertical, vertical uh, line, which means that the slope is undefined. Now, I should know that just based on the fact that it's a vertical line. But if I try to calculate it, if I pick a couple of points here, then I am going uh, up 2 and 0 to the right and 0 to the left, which would mean that the uh, slope would be 2 over 0, which is indeed an undefined number. All right, so what about our last example here? This should have a positive slope. So let me start by picking two good points. This one is a, is a good one. And this one, this one. Um, sure, I could take the point of intersection. Or I could go all the way over here. that I'll have to go up three and then to the right two four six and so for F the slope will be 
up three and to the right six and that will simplify to one half. So it's a really good skill to learn is to uh, be able to recognize quickly. So two of these, no calculation is needed if it's a horizontal line. The slope is zero. If it's vertical, it's undefined. But by just counting, we can get a very quick value for uh, the value of the slope. And of course, we can at least check the sign, whether it's positive or negative, by just looking at it. All right, how can I uh, use a formula or determine a formula? Well, if I have two points and I label their coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2, we did this when we did the distance formula. We said that the change in x, the delta x, is the difference in the x coordinates, so x2 minus x1. And for y, the change in y is y2 minus y1. Well, slope is delta y over delta x, and so that gives us a formula. Slope would be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So a quick example here. Here I have two points, negative 2 comma 1 and 3 comma 4. Let's calculate the slope of the line that passes through them. So again, I like to label my points, my coordinates. So I, here I have x1 and y1, x2 and y2. And now I'm just going to substitute those values into the formula and work it out. So 4 minus 1 is 3. Minus a minus will make a plus. So 3 plus 2 is 5. Alright, so here's our formula again. Here's another example. I have 3 comma negative 1 and 3 comma 4. Go ahead and label those. Substitute it into my formula and now I get a 0 in the denominator. You cannot divide by 0. So this tells me that this is a vertical line and its slope is undefined. So here in our last example is a different type of question. We're not calculating the slope. The slope is given to us. When we're given one point, we'd like to find a second point. So in other words, I'd like to find what is y2 and x2. So there's obviously, you know, there, there are an infinite number of possibilities. But let's see how we can find 1. That's all we want is just the coordinates of one more point. So again, I have an x1 and a y1. Now, if I think of this slope of m equals 2 as 2 over 1, rise over run, vertical change over horizontal change, or delta y over delta x. And remember, delta y how did we get this formula? We, we used delta y as y2 minus y1. Well, I know delta y. Delta y is 2. And I know y1. So I can solve for y2. So y2 will equal 3. Now I'll do the same thing with delta x. I know delta x can be taken as 1 and x1 is 3, so I can solve for x2. I get x2 equals 4. So another point on the line has coordinates 4, comma, 3. 